could be telling people you could be telling people about your company growth maybe um you're launching an event or a campaign and so on so at the very start of your journey tell people you're out there and what you're doing but then as you move through the business maybe even to exit you'll find that um those who who might buy your business or perhaps um, you know invest in it at a later stage will be looking to see what kind of profile you've got so in other words your your coverage and your reputation has a value and it will have a value when you come particularly to to raising rounds of funding if you're I do a lot of work with bio, bioscience pharmaceuticals and so on and very often there's a really significant part of the pitch to the investors which all which is all about reputation and and who knows and how far has your reputation gone but most importantly though to remember at this point is that it needs to be planned and sustained so using um, PR in a business is, um, is, is an underlying, it's like the river, I'll use the analogy of a river, although at the moment, you know, maybe not of such a great today with all the flood warnings, but imagine a river running through your business. PR is, is that. <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes people make the big mistake of um, uh, thinking, well, send a press release out uh, because this is happening, and then they go quiet again. So I really would encourage you to have a plan and to then sustain the activity. So you probably have a monthly um, piece of news work or and I'll come on to the sort of things that you might like to do for your PR. So there we are, planned and sustained. <laughs> Let me move on to uh, the second lesson, which is me and my new venture are unique. And this is what um, journalists love and we all love to hear about your story. I mean, as you were introducing yourselves just now, I was intrigued to find out, you know, what it is you do and why you do it. And, you know, designer travel, ooh, what does that mean? And journalists are just as inquisitive as, as is the public. But there are three things I want you to um, grasp here. And this is what we need to know about. And the three are the pain the premise and the proof of what you do and the pain therefore is so what pain do you solve and for whom what is it that you actually do and why for whom then how do you actually do this and finally you know what well, so why should people buy from you what is it that's special about you now in my book I've taken the stories of five entrepreneurs and throughout the book their stories are woven in terms of their experience with using PR. And one of the examples is the tuneless choir. Some of you might have heard of tuneless choir because there are about 30 franchises across the country now. <clears throat> the tuneless choir has been set up for members who were always told they couldn't sing. Maybe it was at school, maybe, maybe wherever it was, there was that you cannot sing. Would you stop singing, please? Because you're spoiling it for everybody else. And the owner, said to me the founder said to me Louise I'm thinking of setting up this choir and I said to her do you know that is so so good that is so interesting because actually singing is very good for the soul and it's very good for all sorts of reasons people should be singing irrespective of what they sound like <clears throat> so the pain she was sorting out was the fact that people desperately wanted to sing she did this by setting up a franchise and so there are now 30 tuneless choirs all around the country. There's, there's, one, uh, there's one or two in Derbyshire now. There's certainly a number in Nottinghamshire. And, and they're, they're starting in Yorkshire all over as well. Why should people go to tuneless choir? Well, because it's the only one really that's there. And I think it's also a shot in the arm. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Which is really, really nice. And I think the people who are part of that love it. So that's me and my new venture are unique. The reality is, don't have that little voice on your shoulder which says you're not worthy of, of news coverage, you're not worthy of me reading about you on or, or, social media. You are, because your story is, is really special. <clears throat> so I would advise you if, you, if you haven't yet started to do this, but to keep a journal of your business journey so that when it comes to talking to a journalist about your story, it's, it's all there. And why? It's the why did you start? Why and why do you love what, what you do? 
The third uh, lesson, if you're going to get involved in um, PR, you really, really do need to target um, everything that you do, because otherwise you will waste a lot of money. And for this, I've got a, another slide here for you, which if there's one image that you remember um, from a public relations campaign, it's this one. And this is why. So the target is to hit the centre of this Venn diagram. This is the ideal campaign. What you're doing here is, is first of all, you, you've got to decide, so what, what is that message? What is it you need to get across? Now, I had like to think that in your business plan, in your marketing, you've honed that down already. What do you want to achieve and why? Um, so for instance, for my company, for Integra Communications, I want to, and it, my, my mission, vision, values really are to contribute to a thriving economy. I want to do that. So that's contributing. So I, I'm only a part of a small part of a bigger picture, really. I want to see my clients flourish. And so therefore the messaging in my campaigns is prove it. Tell us how your, how your clients flourish. Who are they and what do they do? And then we also like to apply wisdom and integrity to our PR work. And that kind of tells you a little bit about myself, my character, uh, why I do what I do. So I think with Integra, we, we've honed our messaging. And what we try to do is get that out as, as subtly and as often as, as we can. And then you need to look at your, your audience. Now, <laughs> you, know, you really can decide, obviously, who, who it is, who, who's your ideal customer. You can break that down to gender, age, geography, sector, um, their stage of their state, their stage of development. It can be so fine, fine tuned, but you do need to sit down and really, really um, analyze. It's the analyzing the audience and, and where are they and what do they need? What do they need to hear? And then finally, so how am I going to get this out? How am I going to get the message to the audience? What's the best media? to use and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, media in a moment but it's multifaceted now it's enormously multifaceted so I just wanted you to see that as a as an ideal campaign and again take it take it away to use it <clears throat> fourthly news should be topical and timely I I have clients and you know I have had clients in the past who've come to me with what they think is a news story but unfortunately, um, it really doesn't cut, cut the mustard. It's not exactly what we're looking for um, because news should be something that's actually happening, that's, that's, that, that is um, going to grab people's attention. Three different types of news creation though for you, if you're doing your own campaigning, your, your own work. The first one is the one we're probably all familiar with, which is what we call earned publicity. And that of course is the, uh, the golden nugget that's what we're all after and that's where an editor decides that you are newsworthy so you get a piece of coverage which somebody else a third party a reporter editor producer has decided they want to cover and it's earned because you deserve it it's it's a lovely story secondly of course there's paid for publicity which are, which we're all familiar with that's the advertorials um, you've, you would really like to appear in this particular magazine or trade journal, your piece of news might not be earth shatteringly amazing, but you've decided you'll hand over some hard earned cash for the privilege of coverage. Now we should, as consumers of that magazine, we should see that that's paid for. Because if we don't, I think that's unfair on us because we, as readers, because we assume this story for some reason has been bettered by the editor, but it, but it hasn't. Frankly, you've, you've paid to be there. And But the final third uh, strand of publicity is what we call owned and shared, and that is increasingly important. And I guess you're all already doing this. This is where you become your own journalist. You are your own creator of news, purveyor of that news through your social media channels and increasingly I'm finding with my clients um, because there are fewer and fewer journalists around and the print media media are under a lot of pressure 
we're finding it very effective for me to become the journalist and the editor and creating content for them. So news is about things happening. Um, what I've done in, in PR and a beer mat, I've actually interviewed a number of journalists and Tom Witherow from the Daily Mail was saying to me that really, um, you know, but news should be either human interest story, which I think really suits you guys really, really well, the human interest, and there's hard news. So for a, a, a paper like the, the Daily Mail, and he's on the business team, he has to report uh, company um, results, annual results, uh, share price, and that sort of thing. Well, that is, that's hard news not very exciting but uh, he quite he quite likes the human interest stories very much so clearly there's um there's local versus national as well um do you do you want do you recognize that most of the people you want to get to are local um then that's focus focus there a lot of my clients want national coverage so i'm under enormous pressure you know, to, to get them into the Daily Telegraph, the Financial Times, the uh, the weekend supplements, um, you can imagine that's quite tough. So they have to really cut the mustard. They have to have a good story. Just a, a heads up here that I saw some news um, this morning that Google News, Google News Showcase has now agreed with a number of our national publications houses like Archant, Reach, PLC and others and Financial Times, I think, as well, to show local news stories within their Google search. So if there's um, where the search engine users are browsing locally, your, your story will get picked up. That's really exciting. That's a really interesting development. So would you, you know, have, a, have a Google at, at Google News, uh, at New Google News Showcase. Let me move on now um, to thinking like a journalist. And this is what I have to do all the time. And I'd love you to do this as well. <clears throat> Journalists have a particular job to do. It's very different from the PR. Uh, their, their job is to uh, be ruthless in their telling of a story. They've got to be thinking about their listeners, readers, viewers. They're not there to blow your trumpet for you. They are there to be very um, uh, analytical about the story, but they have to, um, they, they have to meet deadlines. So understanding their job, they have to meet deadlines. They would really appreciate your help because of those deadlines. So what I would suggest is you get to know some of the journalists who cover your sector. Do a bit of homework from today and find those names of people who you'd really like to pick up your story. Follow them on Twitter, um, find out what they write about, find out what they're interested in. Spend time getting your story clear. One of the things that you'll learn is that when you put a press release out, you follow it up with a phone call to the journalist. Within about 20 seconds, you've got to have got the nub of the story out to them because otherwise you've lost them. Yeah, so the nub of the story. And here, I want you to imagine you're standing in the pub, something amazing has happened in your business and you need to shout the story across the, a, a noisy bar to your friend, Dave. Can you get it, that story over in one sentence? And, and it's, it's, really, it's really tough. It's a kind of very interesting exercise to have to do. And journalists are very good at it we're going to have to be very good at it too. And um, also what I would say is that thinking like a journalist, keep saying to yourself what they always say to me, so what? You come up with a story, you sent the press release out and you know the first thing they say on the phone to you, so what? And if you keep saying, so what? to yourself enough, it's like saying why, you will get to the heart of why your story is great, the so what. And I'd love you to um, have a go, have a go. Let me move on quickly to blow, blow your own trumpet, but make sure it sounds pleasant. And this is where you're creating your own, your own news. Do you remember I mentioned owned and shared PR? Give you some examples here. You're probably already doing it and I'd love to hear so blogs, clearly you can be your own writer, writing blogs, 
vlogging is video vlogging, uh, where you've got a video clip. Um, but if you are going to do videos for yourselves, do make sure you get the filming right and the sound right. And in, in, in the book, I've I've interviewed um, Jack Delaney from Simply Thrilled, who's a videographer, and he gives you some tips on how to get a video spot on, how to, how to think about um, noise, noise in the background and avoid that and so on, things like that. Podcasts are really popular. I think the audio, um, uh, the, I think the, the, the audio genre has really taken off because we can all listen to podcasts wherever we are. Um, videos are trickier because we've actually got to concentrate on the, on the visual image there. So if you can either uh, launch your own podcast series or get yourself invited onto a relevant podcast series, that works really well. Now, there's something called newsjacking. Newsjacking is where there's a major news story, nationally, let's say, but you've got something that's associated or relevant to it. And what you do there is you then put out a message which says, guess what? My company solves this problem. So I was interested to hear about Sarah with her designer travel. Australia is just opening up. Amazing. But here, Sarah has an opportunity to news Jack by putting out a story about the fact that she's about to take some people out to Australia. Suddenly, journalists will get in touch with Sarah and say, Sarah, can we talk to you? Can we talk to those you're taking out there? Can we follow them? I mean, that, wouldn't that be amazing? So what's happening in the news this week that you could news Jack? Uh, important message here, I think, for you on visual content of, to catch other people's attention. You pay as much attention as the national media do to the quality of photographs, the quality of video and so on. One of the hardest things I find with some of my clients is the dire quality of photos they send through to me. So I always say to people, you know, if you're serious about wanting media coverage, Book yourself a photographer, particularly one who's worked with uh, picture desks um, and understands the makeup of a good, a good news story picture. Right, let me move to the last, whoops, go the other way, sorry. No, that way, it's that way. Uh, number seven, um, I won't go into this in great detail, but digital is where it's at now, digital PR. Um, Using uh, your uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google, um, uh, uh, certainly LinkedIn for business, maybe those of you are on TikTok, wherever you are, Instagram. By now, I think most of us are used to uh, using analytics, Google Analytics. Just, But if you're going to use digital, understand that people have a very, very short uh, attention span, really, really short. I've started to do video clips for my clients because most a lot of people now on LinkedIn will, will watch a little bit of video clip as opposed to reading because actually lots of people don't like reading anymore. So they'd rather have a little bit of a sound bite. But again, um, a minute maximum, 90 seconds maximum for, for a little video clip is ideal. So if there's anything you need to do, and maybe if you're not very comfortable with digital, that's, that's the moment perhaps to look at some of the local universities to see if you can get a student intern to, to beef up your um, social media work. Now, um, you, I've talked a lot about um, how you do this, but actually you need to hone some skills some, and hone and practice some PR skills. And these are, th these are the skills I suppose I've honed over 35 years, but I mean, um, the, you can do this yourself too. It helps if you're a bit of a strategic thinker. Get, went back to the beginning to talk about planning. Um, think long term. Think where do you want the business to look and feel in about three years time? That will impact on your public relations messaging and the media. So be a strategic, strategic thinker. Uh, certainly when I worked with um, uh, a number of my of, of companies, for instance, I, I was certainly working with a bioscience incubator space in Nottingham that not only wanted to develop one building, but wanted to have a series of buildings over over 10 years. And so now they have about six or seven buildings around the UK, which are bioscience business incubators. But we started back in 2007 with a very simple message. 
you know, we really want to help bioscience small companies to thrive and grow. You need to be good planners. You, might, you need to enjoy that, enjoy the fact that each month you've got a very disciplined uh, work, worksheet, Excel spreadsheet of your PR activity for that month. Think, think creatively, think a little bit, um, how can I make this a little bit different? Or how can I, how can I next do a survey or a, a sort of an event that's just a little bit different from what perhaps others are doing. It helps you to be curious about the world around you and to um, keep, a, keep a record of things you notice. So sort of having your eyes open to what's going on around. So curiosity is another skill. It's great if you're good at writing and editing. So uh, if you can't do that, get somebody else to do it for you. A confident communicator, really important when you come to pitching in a story on um, uh, to, to, a, to a journalist, you know, otherwise you choke and, uh, and you find yourself stumbling all over the place. Be fairly flexible because all the plans that you put in place, you know, sometimes they just don't work. Um, be good at relational building. I think you all are actually because you're all good networkers. Relational build with with the journalists, because they're people who you want to get on side. Don't see them as the opposition, as some PRs do, actually. I see them as colleagues, so build relationships. And then honesty and tenacity, uh, the kind of tenacity that Rob showed this morning to get into the call, um, you know, stick at it, just stick at it. Now, we don't, we, we don't like crises, but hashtag nine is anticipate a crisis. Uh, some of my bigger clients actually have a crisis handling uh, strategy and plan, and it's very, very detailed. And you can imagine the kind of companies that have to do this, where they're perhaps handling, handling uh, difficult waste materials. Um, we certainly had to have a crisis strategy for uh, the bioscience business incubator because um, one or two animal rights activists still thought that they were uh, doing animal te tests on animals, and, and they worked, but we had to have a, um, a, a plan in place for somebody, a media spokesperson, to be available if anything went wrong. Uh, briefly, kind of crisis you could face, well, it could be financial, uh, you go bust, heaven, hope you don't. It could be an employee does something wrong, uh, and, and, um, uh, and has to be dismissed, and, and that hits the headline for some reason. It could be technological, it could be IT, so your systems go down and you're, you're responsible for sorting it out. Clearly accidents do happen. Uh, it could be a product fault, and if it is a product fault, then it has to be rectified and it has to be um, uh, sorted out. Natural disasters are happening all around us at the moment, so uh, smaller firms are are doing their best, particularly if they're around a riverside. But what an opportunity actually to, uh, to get some positive media coverage if you've uh, got over a natural disaster. And then of course, there's the unforeseen like COVID. Uh, and certainly I, I work with a number of clients who had to quickly change what they were doing because of COVID. Tips really here are plan for any potential crisis and learn from it. Learn if you've had to tackle a crisis, learn from it so you don't do it again, it doesn't hit again. Uh, number 10 is if you've got staff, then internal public relations, internal communications is really important because look after your staff and they will look after you in, in a crisis. Uh, so um, make sure that communications is open, open door policy, regularly talk to them, team briefs on Zoom, uh, which had to happen during lockdown. There's some great examples of companies staying in touch and keeping staff motivated because actually you also want your staff to stay with you. And a lot of companies now are really struggling for talent and, and a company that clearly does its PR well is going to attract great staff and, and great teams. Finally, coming to the end here, uh, if all else fails, you might want to outsource your work to someone like me. But your PR agency really should be one of the team. Uh, I've seen so many companies who go and you know, buy an agency from London and they bolt them on and it kind of doesn't quite work. Crucially here, if you're going to outsource this work, uh, you need a, a good brief. So the person who's gonna be doing the work understands um, what you're after because the, it's their side, it's a two-way thing this. You write the brief, they then pitch against the brief 
and know what, what to expect. It's about managing expectations, isn't it? But importantly is, do they have your sector knowledge? Do they understand it? Yeah, do, do they understand bioscience or do they understand uh, hospitality? Do they understand uh, the charity sector? What are their contacts like? You know, have they really got a good um, data bank of, of journalists who they, they really, really know? Are they creative? Have they come up with a really interesting campaign for your business or your charity? And does the chemistry work? Will you get on with this person? Do you trust them to do a, a, a good job? And then finally, uh, simply tell your story to whoever will listen. And, um, you know, if you grab a copy of, of, of the book, um, there are five stories woven through the book of the uh, entrepreneurs who I used and spoke to. And they all tell their story really, really well. So get used to telling your story and um, you'll be a great PR. Over to questions. Have we got questions? That's fantastic. Thank you, Louise. So Is any questions from anybody? I've got a quick um, question. Yes, Wendy. Um, I have to say, I couldn't, I, I when I, I read Louise's book, which you can see all the like little things I've, tabs I've got down it because it's actually really useful. The, the things that she says, the points I'm like, oh my God, I've got to go back to that. Um, but I was I was really uh, struck by the stories that you told in your, in your book, uh, Louise. Um, would you mind sharing us with us the story of T, the the um, PR, uh, yeah, that got attention with that? I really enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, okay. So T Rex teas. Anyone been into Sainsbury's? Anyone ever bought a T Rex tea, which is a uh, fruit infusions teas? Right, briefly, I came across Alex Walker, the founder of T-Rex Teas, because my daughter sent me a lovely gift during lockdown called Hug in a Mug. And it was a little box came along and in it was a T-Rex tea, uh, a sachet of tea and a holy moly biscuit. And what had happened, and I, this was my gift, gift from my daughter during lockdown, Hug in a Mug, lovely idea. And Andrew Walker happened to be an alumni of Loughborough University, where my daughter works. You can see the links here. So I, I, I got to know Andrew Walker because what he did was he wrote a lovely um, message on the outside of the box. So not only did I see it as soon as I got it, but the postman did and everybody else probably as well, too. Dear Louise, you know, enjoy this love from whatever. So I thought this man's fascinating. So I got in touch with Andrew Walker. I said, Andrew, I'm writing a book. Um, can I interview you? Because you do look rather interesting and you, you've got your teas into Sainsbury's. What on earth? What did you do? So it was the hug in the mug got me into Andrew. What Andrew did rather naughtily, because Sainsbury's were not expecting it, he wanted to get into 69 branches of Sainsbury's. How was he going to do that as a very small business? Hadn't even been on, on uh, Dragon's Den. So what he did was he got about a dozen university chums to dress up in dinosaur outfits. Yeah, imagine T-Rex, T-Rex T's. He got dinosaurs. They literally um, gate crashed a Sainsbury's in, I'm forgetting where it was. I think it might have been Croydon, somewhere down there. He'd lined up some uh, surreptitious videoing going on in the store as these dinosaurs marched across the car park into the store, <coughs> went to the tea aisle, rather cheekily put some teas onto the, onto the shelf and then got out quick smartish before they were escorted off premises by the security guys. Now, the, the manager was in on this, um, uh, we now discover, but actually nobody else was. And it hit social media about a day later. And it was phenomenal because everybody in Sainsbury saw it, it went through internal, everything, and they just loved it. They loved his creativity. They loved, they loved his tenacity, but, but he was a, you know, yeah. Now that that story, I think that's the <laughs> Wendy. That it I kind is, of open, yes. open the book with that because, yeah, it's that storytelling you've got to be good at. Yeah. Okay. Next question. 
Alex, did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah, I did. How, obviously, you working with an agency, you get their, con you know, the contacts of journalists and stuff, but you're, you're saying try and do it on your own as you're starting out and things. Where, yeah. how do you research the best journalists and get their contact details to send out your p p press releases to? Yeah. I'm talking about this with them as well. Yes, I mean, if you use an agency like uh, like me, you have a license. I have a media database, which I pay a license for, which covers the whole of Europe. So I have journalists. I can find journalists anywhere in my, but I have to pay for that. Uh, years ago, when I started out in PR, I used to have to go and buy the papers and the magazines. Yeah, I actually went into a news agent, bought them. This is pre, pre, you know, pre social media. Now, you find them on Google. You find, I mean, just Google uh, Business Reporters Daily Telegraph and they're there. Their names will pop up. Most of them are in LinkedIn, most of them on Twitter. Um, so you will find um, Tom Witherow, Daily Mail, uh, who's now actually an investigative reporter, actually looking at fraud. <laughs> so you don't want to know him too well. Uh, but he used to cover retail. Um, gosh, he covered, he uncovered the post office scandal, by the way. Tom is the most amazing journalist. Um, but otherwise, that's the way to do it. Literally, Google. Uh, you, obviously, go and buy a magazine if you really want to do. I mean, tuneless choirs have just got into Derbyshire Life and Countryside, and they're going into Yorkshire Life. And actually, what Nadine Cooper, the owner, said, I'd quite like to go and buy a copy of Derbyshire Life so that I can actually see what it looks like, mm -hmm. what it feels yeah. like. Um, but the fact is that Nathan Fern, I'm, you know, I know the editor of Nathan Fern really well, so it wasn't a problem for me to pick up the phone to Nathan and say, guess what, we're starting a tuneless choir in Derbyshire. So that's the way to do it. I'm afraid there's no short, there's no, um, there's no shortcut here unless you use an agency. That's... I mean, at the end of the day, that's why a lot of people say, Do you know, I haven't got the time. I'm going to outsource it because actually Louise can actually pull up a list of 50 journalists quite quickly within, yeah. within 10 minutes of putting in the algorithm, putting in the search, search factors. Yeah. And boy, I've had to find some weird and wonderful journalists for um, weird and wonderful sectors like fishing. Total Carp magazine was the funniest. <laughs> Have you ever come across Total Carp? I, 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 anyway, next question. Oh, Dave. Dave. Hi, yeah. Louise. It's Where not really a question. It's just a point, really. Um, yeah. I've sent you a message. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I've got direct links into Uganda. So I can hook you up with somebody. Oh, lovely. So, um, OK, we work in, in North. Oh, we will do. Let's chat. Northeast Uganda, the, I work with a Christian charity that's actually a development, it's a relief and development charity, and we, but, but that's wonderful, fabulous, it looks good. Oh, I love Uganda, the last time I went there was pre-pandemic, and I think we'll be out there in 23, and I want to see how my borehole, let's get to that borehole, shall we, let's get 5,000 books sold. Yeah, let's get up, yeah. Because it's going to be called the beer mat borehole, which you know, I'm not sure it's appropriate, but <laughs> okay. no. But um, obviously, I'll save the chat. Of course, we all know that we we can save the chat at the end of this call. I, I'm I'm just so aware that I've rocketed rocketed through in 23 minutes a lifetime's experience in PR. So I'm sorry if it's sort of been whoa. Louise, is there any possibility if anybody would like to have a one-to-one -one with you to sort of take it to the next level? Is that possible? Oh, no, I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> that would be uh, good. Can, yeah, no, that, of course, of course. Um, so what you need to do is um, <laughs> buy the book. No, that's very cheeky, isn't it? Link up with me on LinkedIn. Um, yes, so uh, I'm on LinkedIn, at Louise Third. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, but obviously, my email address is so simple. It's louise at louise third.com. I would obviously honestly say that I'm really busy at the moment and I'm probably not taking on much more work. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy to, um, to speak at events. I've got a number of events coming up where I'm speaking. Um, yeah. So, anything? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was it okay fantastic thank you thank you louise has anybody got any more questions at all or anything else they'd like to add i just want to say that was brilliant louise it's really nice to hear your story um and it's amazing that you've written a book i was going to say i'd like to 
probably do some work with you. I struggle because I can't tell many of my stories because of my clientele, like the music artists. And it's really hard, like in sports personalities. And I have amazing stories, but I, I, I can't do it. So I need to be creative. Is it, is it because you can't do it because of confidentiality, because they're celebrities or, or because yes. they... and yeah, there's quite big things. Like, and I see a lot when I'm travelling all around the world and I, <laughs> I could write a book, but I think I'd be sued. <laughs> Well, as I suggest to you all, um, so what are your takeaways from, apart from the 12 hashtag lessons, your takeaways should be, maybe, keep what we call a commonplace book. Uh, when I do, I do speech writing, and so I often say to people, keep a journal of things you notice every day, funnies, funny things, people you hear speaking. So, I mean, Alex, you know, look around you to, you know, how is a story told that, me, that, that kind of is, is, uh, not to not controversial or a way of telling a story that's going to work so do that find out some journalists I'd love you to think about a story that you think you should get out there certainly you should be doing your own owned and shared PR you should be right out there on social media but a word of warning don't post about yourself start a conversation as a as a thought leader so that others pick up on that question it's the difference between a mirror and an open window. The mirror post is, look at me, aren't I wonderful? All I can see is myself, aren't I lovely? The open window post is, I'm looking out on the world. I know how you're feeling, what you're thinking. I, I love you. I believe in you. Let's have a conversation. Can you see the difference? And it's the second way, the open window post, that gets the traction, isn't it? It's the one that you want to engage with. Please don't talk too much about yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can I just can I just share one thing that um, I listened into uh, a great TED talk that somebody shared with me yesterday, and um, when we send out an email about today, I'll send you the link. But it's really interesting about the story writing, and this TED talk is everyone around everyone around you has a story the world needs to hear. And it's 12 minutes long, but it's incredibly inspiring. And it's your everyday public just talking and having a conversation. And it's the amazing things that we've all got to say. Yeah. And actually, if you tap into things a little bit more deeply, you'll realise that we have all got fantastic stories that we can share. We just don't always acknowledge them or see them for what they are. So I'll send you that TED Talk, because honestly, it was, it was fantastic, really inspiring. Oh, she'll do that. Right, fantastic. So, Louise, thank you so much for your time. I know you're really, really busy, but I thought that was excellent. I've written like three pages worth of notes. <laughs>